on this edition of The Self-Publishing Show. What's really helped for me in the story creation was it has these moments built in. I didn't just stumble into them. I purposefully created them. Publishing is changing. No more gatekeepers. No more barriers. No one standing between you and your readers. Do you want to make a living from your writing? Join indie bestseller Mark Dawson and first-time author James Blatch as they shine a light on the secrets of self-publishing success. This is The Self-Publishing Show. There's never been a better time to be a writer. Hello and welcome to The Self-Publishing Show with me, James Blatch. And me, Mark Dawson. It's a Friday, we are here and we have some exciting news to start this week's episode off. We are very, very excited that we are about to launch tickets for the self-publishing show live 2023. Yeah, yes. So it's what 20th and 21st of June um, on the South Bank again. So that's the same venue that we've had for the last couple of years. Um, starting to kind of work on the program. So I've got a couple of speakers um, who I actually had a chat with in Florida um, who are coming over and got some interesting plans for uh, this year, specifically for the digital ticket, which we will kind of hint at. Um, well, we, we won't mention too much about it now, but just to say that um, it will be much more valuable than it has been in the past. And if you get a live ticket, which we'll, um, which we're talking about now, you'll get the digital ticket um, and the extras that we're planning uh, as a as a part of that price. Yes. So that's uh, the in terms of the price. Obviously, there is a cost of living. Uh, crisis around the world at the moment. I don't know if you call it that in America, but basically prices are going up. And um, we're we going through everything we can at the moment, trying to keep prices as capped as possible. It's not going to be possible to do the price we did last year. And we did lose a little bit of money last year. Um, we don't mind losing a little bit of money, but we can't lose a lot. And so the prices are going up. However, we are going to do an early bird offer to keep that capped as much as possible. Um, so early birds, if you sign up straight away, you will get the conference at a good discount. And as Mark says, that includes what we think is going to be about $99 worth of digital ticket. That will be included in that. So uh, now you can get your early bird ticket. No panic. It's not today. It's next Friday. So it's Friday, the 21st of October. Tickets will be released at 2 p.m. UK. So that's uh, sort of after breakfast in New York and before breakfast in Los Angeles, but it's a time that everyone we think can get to their computers. Uh, if they're keen, we may sell out, we think potentially the early bird offers are on that day. So you probably do want to be there up in the morning. Uh, the place to go, and I'll give you the URL now, is selfpublishingformula.com forward slash early bird. Okay, and the prices, I can tell you, it's going to be actually up to 18% discount uh, on the full price tickets. So you can get a full conference ticket for both days for £149. And you can get a full conference ticket for both days and the party, the self-publishing party, which you definitely want to go to for £174. They are the two options you have on both of those. Both of them include a digital access ticket and the digital ticket is going to be much bigger and grander than it was last year and that's going to be uh, worth at least $99 to you so you can go snap your ticket up start looking at flights and hotels uh, for London 2023 baby that is June the 20th and 21st Tuesday and Wednesday and you need to go to selfpublishingformula.com forward slash early bird all one word 2 p.m next friday the 21st of october those tickets will be released we'll do another batch in the new year at full price so if you want that early bird offer you want to secure your place we look forward to seeing you in london right we do have a couple of other things to mention um but uh, certainly look forward to seeing you at the show next year uh now let's do our patreon supporter mark do you have the patreon supporter in front of you I do, yes. Uh, Shanda Miller from Tennessee, USA. So thank you very much to Shanda uh, for joining the uh, SPF patron and helping us to keep going with the podcast. And also I need to, uh, after our kind of kerfuffle last week about whether someone someone or was, was or was not in New York, I've heard from Catherine that Michael Robbins is not from New York. Um, so he hasn't actually given us a address. Well, he, so he, he might not be from New York. Well, it's possible. I suppose this probably could. You know, we, we don't know where he is. I mean, New York's a fairly large city, of course. So he could yeah. he could very well be in New York. But there again, he could be in. We could do. We'll do a further clarification next week. If uh, we, Michael, well, yeah. if he wants, to if, get he in wants touch with. if he wants to us to 
correctly locate him, then he needs to drop us a line. But um, thank you very much to uh, Michael uh, again, and thank you to Shanda from who's definitely from Tennessee. Um, thank you, so Shanda. Thank yeah. you to both of them. Uh, good. Right, we also have one more thing to talk about before we come on to our interview. Our interview, by the way, is about getting going in self-publishing. So it's like the perfect interview for people like me and uh, those of us at the, towards the beginning of our, our careers. Uh, we have a prize to talk about. So how do you fancy a £25,000 advance from Audible or an offer from Audible for your first book? That's one of the prizes you get for winning this competition. Another is £1,000 cash. And I'm guessing, I guess you get a publishing deal with Joffy. Yes, you do. You get a publishing deal with Joffy Books. So this has been put up by Jasper Joffy, uh, who runs Joffy Books, a friend of the show. Uh, we are very huge admirers of Jasper and everything he's done uh, here in the UK, building up that imprint. Concentrates on crime and gritty crime. So I'm going to going to read the uh, the blurb now this prize so right from the beginning is for people of color so this is exactly what um what uh, jasper has written here the prize invites submissions from unagented authors from black asian indigenous and minority ethnic backgrounds writing in crime fiction genres including electrifying psychological thrillers cozy mysteries gritty police procedurals twisty chillers unput downable suspense mysteries and shocking domestic noirs i'd read any of those the way that jasper right he's obviously a good blurb writer isn't he um yeah. there you go so that's what you need to do and uh, that prize is a really really good one you can enter up until midnight on the 31st of october 2022 there are uh, some more details about what exactly you need to do for your submission if you go to the following place, joffybooks.com forward slash prize, P-R-I-Z-E. We spell it with a Z, don't we? Yes. It's well, not one of those words sort of like it would fit the uh, UK, no. US thing if we spelled it with an S and then a Z, but we both spell it with a Z. We do, yes. Or a Z. Um, yeah, so joffybooks.com forward slash prize. Well done, Jasper, for uh, initiating that prize. And uh, obviously he feels he works in the industry that there's an underrepresentation there and he's trying to fix that with this prize and raise the profile. So good luck with that. I'll tell you what, we'd like to speak to the winner, wouldn't we, at some point? Might even have them on the show and talk about how their, their uh, writing is going. Good. Mark, I think that's it uh, We for our preamble. But we have the main meat in our sandwich now. Or, if you like, tofu. Oh, dear. Yes, here we go. Um, <laughs> yes, yes, it's a, it's a meaty sandwich today. So we've got... Um, who have we got on the podcast, James? We've got Michael Webb, haven't we? And the uh, topic is getting started, I think. Yeah, it is. So Michael Webb is someone who's had a really terrific start to his indie publishing career. Uh, he's somebody who gets a lot right. He focuses his work. We always talk about smarting, smart work rather than hard work. Um, and absolutely, I think Michael is an example of that. So we really dissect how he's got to where he's got to so quickly with just a couple of books. Very useful for people like me. So here's Michael and Mark and I will be back for a chat at the end of the interview. This is the self publishing show. There's never been a better time to be a writer. Hey, Michael Webb, welcome to the self publishing show from Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, we are going to talk, I think, about getting going in the whole indie space, which uh, I guess, you know, we can talk to each other about this because I've kind of got going in the last <laughs> couple of years. But uh, why don't we start with yeah. you as you're the guest and tell us a bit about your, your indie position, where you are now, how you got going? Cool. Uh, well, I started writing uh, three years ago. Um, out of the blue. I, I never wrote at all. I, I hated writing when I was growing up. Whenever I get assignments in school, I always cringed about it. But um, I was always been a big reader. I uh, love stories, fantasy, young adult, suspense, adventure. Um, and I kind of got this you know bucket list idea in my head of, that would be fun to write a novel and you know share it with a few friends and family. And uh, I just thought that would be cool. And so I, so I dug in. You know, I said, all right, I'm going to do it. And I started writing and I quickly realized that it's a lot more work than I expected. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and that's, you know, that's shame on me for saying, all right, I, I want to write. So boom, let's start with a novel. Um, but I got into it and absolutely fell in love with it. And the, the farther I got into writing, I realized all right, I'm, I don't just want to put something out there, you know, to write and copy, print it, send it off to Amazon, sell five copies and be done. I realized if I'm going to put this much time and effort into it, I want to do it right. So I 
put a ton of time into research, reading books, listening to podcasts, reading blogs, talking to other authors to figure out, all right, if I'm going to do it right, nobody knows who I am. No one's heard of Michael Webb. Uh, so I don't have anything to stand on, but how do I, how do I do it right to get my name out there? So I produce a book that's quality, but also is something that people will find and enjoy reading and share with their friends. And then I never had aspirations of really making a profit or much less making a living off of it. Um, so it's been pretty cool. That was about three years ago when I started writing my first book published April of 2021. So that's about 15, 16 months ago now. Okay. Um, well, well, we'll unpack some of that. But the, the, the focus on quality at the beginning. So I, I funny, mm -hmm. funny enough, I've just been interviewed on another podcast on uh, a podcast on Kat <laughs> Coldwell's podcast. And I was telling her how I found it quite difficult to get my head into how novel writing works. So it doesn't matter how many books <laughs> you've read in your life. You don't, really yeah. understand the mechanics of it until you start to write and, and sort of realizations yep. that that you contrive everything uh, but you've got to make it look subtle and, and all these things that we go through as novelists it took me years to do that i mean probably if i had add up the beginning part of it where i didn't know what i was doing and then the last three or four years i think probably five or six years of writing and rewriting one book to get my first book out it's been quicker since then but you seem to have done all of that quite quickly <laughs> yeah, it didn't feel quickly, right. <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I think the biggest thing that helped um, was a few different things. One is uh, I'm a huge, huge reader going into it, and I know what I like. You know, I know when I read a book, let's, I write in young adult epic fantasy. So let's say, you know, reading those books, when you get to a moment of the book and you're like, you're like cheering. You're just reading through pages, but you're like, so you're smiling as you read because it's so exciting or like a moment when a character does something awesome. Uh, those moments stick with me. And that's what makes me, when I think of my favorite books, I think of the ones that have several of those moments peppered in that just, I just get super pumped up about. So when I first started writing, the, the number one thing I did was I kind of reverse engineered mm -hmm what are some moments I want to put in my book? And so I went back and thought through my favorites. You know, I thought through like, um, like in the hunger games uh, where Katniss is going through the training and she's testing and she scores like the highest score out of everyone who's going through the, the, the different candidates, uh, the tributes. Um, and what reading that I'm like, Oh, that is so cool that she was able to do that over all these other people. Um, or in um, in Name of the Wind, my, my all-time favorite book, Quoth is interviewing at the, no, he's uh, he's teaching at the university because the this professor is awful and rude to him. And he says, all right, well, why don't you teach the class? And so he goes up there and says, all right, you have me to do it. And he like blows everyone away with teaching and ends up embarrassing the professor. But it's just this moment of like, everyone wants the chance to be that awesome. And to see this character who's, you know, kind of, you know, overlooked or, you know, people don't give them much thought. And then all of a sudden they're, you know, raised to this level of appreciation uh, just, just really makes you excited about moments. So that's where I started. I said, yeah. all right, uh, I what love... moments do I want to? Sorry, I was just going to say, I love no, go ahead. that aspect. I was thinking about this yesterday. I think about Danny Boyle films, a British film director who did um, things like mm -hmm. 28 Days Later and Sunshine. Yeah. Uh, and the one where the guy, guy cut his arm off, uh, spoiler alert. Um, he, I think he does the same thing filmmaking. I think he thinks of this incredible yeah. set piece scene, which is probably around the kind of 90 minute mark of a two hour film. And then he builds a film around it and the score <laughs> and the music and everything. But it's not a bad way right. of, of doing a story, of having yeah. that moment and then thinking, okay, how do we get here? Re as you say, reverse engineer it. Yeah. So that, that's the approach I took in, in writing. I didn't have my plot. I didn't know what I was going to write, but I said, all right, I want this to happen. And I put it on a piece of paper and I want this to happen. And this, not that I'm copying and putting it in, but I'm saying, what was the emotion? What was the feeling that the reader had in that moment? And how can I create a similar sort of feeling in a situation that's something unique? Yeah. Uh, so then I, I put those out on the paper. I had like four of them in, in The Last Shadow Night, my, my first book, my debut uh, novel. Uh, and so I, I put those down as my kind of my, my pillars of the book. And then I said, okay, 
how do we get to that place? All right, let's let's start here. Then how do we get from here to here? Okay, then we do a little of this. And so then I think the what's really helped for me in the story creation was it has these moments built in. I didn't just stumble into them. I purposefully created them. Um, you know, it's neat. I just recently read uh, Seven Figure Fiction, uh, the, the, the concept of universal fantasies. It's a book written toward romance novels, but it really applies to anywhere. But it's that same concept. I didn't realize it at the time, but I'm trying to build these moments that people, you know, anybody reading absolutely loves that concept. And so they get excited about the the, the scene of what's going on. You know, I've heard it said people don't want to be entertained. They want to be emotionally moved. Yeah. Uh, so trying to create these emotional responses, but through a, a setting that makes them cheer or makes them, you know, boo or whatever you're trying to create in that moment. Uh, but I think it's ended up working really well with uh, the books I've published so far. Can you give us some examples? I mean, you gave us some some examples from films, uh, but maybe from your stories of of how you've done that, how you've come up with that moment that's going to be an emotional impact rather than simply a hero moment. Uh, yeah. Um, so I don't want to uh, spoil alert in no. too much of the stories, but uh, that's okay. Um, so in... Um, in, in the last shadow night, uh, the story centers around this um, this this kid grows up on the streets, and uh, his you know parents had died, and he finds this mentor, you know, the Shadow Knight. So there's this secret organization, um, and he finds the last person is this old guy. He's kind of retired, but he brings him in and you know trains them like his apprentice. Um, so as he's going on, he basically, he used to be living on the streets and stealing and, uh, you know, kicked to the curb, barely surviving, barely having food. And now he's training, he's learning, he's, he's learning about sword fighting. He's getting educated. He's learning to read. And then as the story goes on, there's this one character who's always bullied him. You know, he, he was like the, the head of the, like a captain in the army. And they have these run-ins in the city all the time. Uh, his friend was actually killed by this guy. Uh, but now he's grown up and he's unrecognizable from what he was as a kid. He was like this street urchin living, you know, in the gutters. And now he's this well-respected person in the city who's trained and educated. And they have this moment later and kind of two thirds of the way through the book where there's this, um, it, it's not like a, it's a duel, but not in like a fighting war. It's like a, like a, like a stage competition, like a, like a friendly competition in the city of like staff, like a quarter staff competition. And it ends up where the other guy is in it and Varen, the main character is in it. And so it builds up to this moment where they are faced off as the, the, the two finalists. Uh, and he gets this opportunity to, the guy doesn't know it's him, but he obviously knows the captain um, and he's able to defeat him, but it's this, uh, he has this respect that he's standing up and the entire crowd, all this city is cheering for him where he used to be the guy who was kicked down in the gutter and overlooked yeah. and nobody liked. And so he's able to defeat, quote unquote, defeat this nemesis of his. Uh, so it's a big moment of his in this triumph to see the progress that he's made over the, the course of the book and all the things he's learned. Uh, but it's a really cool moment for the reader yeah. to be able to see that and cheer with him. So exactly. So if you can get that, that moment where you know as a writer, if you got it right, the reader's going to be punching the air type thing. Uh, I was thinking, right. as you as you explained that story, I was thinking about Gladiator, a film we all know, where mm -hmm. finally Maximus kills the Emperor, and that's... Right. Sounds grim, doesn't it, the way I say it? I'm now say it out loud, but we all cheered. <laughs> we all <laughs> yeah. punched the air with that fact, because there's been such a, you know, such a, a, a journey for him, a road for him to that point. That was the the yeah. most gloriously uh, served dish of revenge. So I guess that's a, that's sort of inspiration we should take in trying to find those moments. So you come up yeah. with that kind of, I mean, that, you know, that that moment's not just isolated. You must have come up with a reasonable amount of that. It's going to be a long journey to get him to this point. Or do you do you, do you have this <laughs> yeah. jewel in your mind first, and then think, well, how why is it so important to him, and then re reverse engineer it that way? Sure. And a lot of what I try to build are uh, twists. I, I like. I like turning the plot on its head, not like ridiculous twists that, you know, completely come out of nowhere just for the sake of it, but well-placed changes about characters. You didn't know who they were uh, or, you know, someone comes from nowhere that is going to change everything of what's going on. Uh, so I've got a lot of those built in uh, and I, I, I put those as a lot of my, my, my 
significant points that I try to build the story around. Okay, build up to this twist, and then bam. Uh, there's one part in in my second book near the end. Uh, without fail, everybody everybody who reads Rise of the Shadow, my second book, they come back to me. They said, "Holy cow! I did not see that coming." And uh, it's it's really cool because it builds up. And I had it in my mind way back when I'm writing book one. I'm like, okay, the end of book two. There's going to be this awesome moment. And I kind of built it up all planning to get to that part. Yeah. So tell us about book one. You, you got it finished. I mean, how mm -hmm. much professional help did you then engage? Because getting started is another thing. I didn't really know how the editing process even worked. So did you <laughs> research all this at that, yeah. that point? Yeah. So I started without researching. I started just writing, putting words on paper about halfway through. Like I said, that's when I realized I don't want to just sell a few copies to friends and family. I want something that... I could pull off a book on Barnes and Noble shelf and pull it up to mine and say, this is just as good as that, if not better. So I said, all right, if I'm going to do that, I need to, I need to start researching. Um, so when I finished my first draft, um, initially I thought, all right, first draft, boom, I'm done, print it and send it off. But I'm like, okay, I need to get it edited. Um, so before I even did, before I got with a professional editor, I used uh, alpha readers. So not even beta readers. This is kind of like, hey, this is rough. It's out there. Give me some feedback. I, you know, am I completely off the mark here? Uh, and of course, I used the, the, the cardinal sin of friends and family mm -hmm. uh, because that's all. That's all I had. Um, but I got some good feedback from them. Uh, they they weren't nearly harsh enough. Uh, when I look back and read my early stuff, it's whew, man, it needed help. Um, but that helped me get it a little bit cleaner. And then I used a developmental editor. Uh, I hired someone to go through and help me with the structure, you know, the plot, the characters, all that sort of stuff. It was mind blowing the amount of information I learned as a writer, not just for this book, but just because I didn't know how to write. I, I wasn't trained uh, as an author. I, I didn't practice on short stories and novellas. I, I jumped in way over my head. And so this, the developmental editor comes back and, you know, I'm, I'm crossing my fingers as I open in my email, like, oh, what's she going to say? What's she going to say? And I open it up and there were, you know, the, the track changes shows the amount of changes in the, in the script. I had 15,000 edits to review. Ooh. And I'm like, oh, that oh might, my That might gosh. be more than my first one, which was, I think, <laughs> eleven or 12,000. But yeah, wow. Yeah. But it's just, it's this gut-wrenching, oh my gosh, I am awful. But you get into it and it's like, okay, this says it's a change, but really it's just changing these two words around. That's not a big deal. I can do that. Or, you know, make a comment about a character and it's like, oh, I can fix that. Let me oh, add a sentence. And now that's solved. So I worked through that, you know, issue after issue. And then uh, with them, I was new. Uh, my developmental editor gave it a second round. So I was like, okay, I've done my edits based on what you gave me. So she took another uh, look through. Uh, to give me more feedback, which was needed because then I'm like, okay, I'm taking it to the next level. It's not just story editing. Now it's getting a little bit more polished through her professionalism. Um, it was still not great by that point. I, I didn't realize it yet, but I'm thinking, oh man, I solved all these problems. Now this is awesome. Um, so I got with some beta readers then. So not my alpha readers were really rough. My beta readers, I'm like, okay, this is getting a little bit better. Um, so I sent out... I had uh, four beta readers in my first round and they come back, they're tearing it up. Uh, like, oh, you gotta change this, fix that, do that. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is awful. And so I'm going back in and I'm editing it all. And then I'm like, okay, I changed that, but I, I'm not feeling good. So I did another round of beta readers, had another three in that the last round, uh, get more feedback. And now starting to feel good. Like I'm getting a lot, mostly all positive response from people. The comments that they're making is, wow, this scene was great. I love this part. Oh man, you know, when something bad happens. Um, and then I feel like, all right, I can sit here revising this till the end of time. At some point I gotta, you know, just just go on. So okay, this is good. I did get with the copy editor then uh to go and you know help me just to make sure I'm not missing anything, all the grammar, the punctuation, the you know, spelling, all that stuff. A lot more changes there. Uh, a lot of the changes were really the the flow of the writing, uh, you know, where it's not stilted sentences or using the same word too many times, you know, a lot of that stuff that caught and edited. Um, so, yeah, I had two rounds of developmental editing, one round of copy editing, a round of alpha readers, two rounds of beta readers. 
uh, without that, I, I wouldn't have sold. I, I would have sold five copies. Uh, but I learned so much during that process, um, and I still maybe not quite as much. But you know, with my my next two books and my fourth that I'm working on right now. I'm shortening a little bit, but I'm still using alpha readers. I'm still using beta readers. I'm still getting a developmental edit. I'm still getting a copy edit. Um, I'm finding it's much quicker and easier now that I kind of know a little bit more about what I'm doing. Yeah. Um, but, but that first book, that was my education session. Uh, you know, I, I didn't go to college for writing, but I sure learned a lot through that first book uh, because every edit I got back, every you know, recommendation was something i'm absorbing it and now i'm learning it and the next book i write i'm hopefully doing it better the first time yeah well that, I, that bit's exactly the same for me the uh, i didn't do a creative mm. writing course or go to college but i i learned on the job same as you uh, right. working with a coach, book coach and development editor um i think the object lesson here probably michael is perseverance dedication and hard work mm. right um yeah. which yeah, it, surprise, yeah, surprise. A lot of hard work at... <laughs> key <laughs> yeah, ingredients right. yeah you you can't just luck into uh, this. There's a lot of luck involved, but there's a lot of hard work and you got to do things right. Uh, I, I feel very lucky, uh, very fortunate with the, the the results of my first book. It completely blew away any expectations I could have even thought about having. Um, but I attribute a lot of that to hard work. I, I worked yeah. my butt off writing it and getting it to be a good novel that I'm proud of. And that you know people review it and say, amazing things i'm like holy cow is it are they, are they talking about the right book or did yeah. they post that on the wrong book um but uh yeah i, I just you know my confidence starts to build and it's 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 really cool to see well you've done really well i can see just looking at, at amazon it's um got a couple of thousand reviews already that book one that was released uh in uh, yeah. a year, just over a year ago so uh yeah but- just just past two thousand on uh, sunday in okay. the u.s so i was pretty pretty pumped about that yeah, that's that's really good. And I think you said in your notes to me, you've, you've tossed it up. You've probably sold 75,000 books now. Uh, no, 48,000 uh, okay. books. Yeah, yeah. And that, that doesn't include audio. I don't have my audio numbers yet. I, I've released that with uh, Podium. So I'm, I'm okay. still waiting on my reports back from that. It's a little yeah. delayed. So let's talk about the marketing side of it. Obviously, you've dedicated okay. yourself to writing, but uh, the marketing is the other <laughs> yeah. side of the indie coin. Um, how did you sure. set about marketing? Um, I, I did a lot and you know, I agree that uh, for most of the authors I talk with, a lot of them, they focus on the writing, they focus on the editing, and then sometimes their books don't sell. Or, okay. What happened? How did it not, how did your sell? And, and mine didn't, uh, I worked my butt off on marketing in every way that I can think of. I went to school, a uh, business, I specialized in marketing, not necessarily that what I'm doing now is, is the same, but, but I'm constantly thinking of ideas. Um, so, I mean, I, I did all the regular stuff, you know, I, I created a website, uh, I got on, uh, social media, I'm on Instagram and Facebook, Michael Webb novels uh, on there. Uh, I try to be active, engaging, um, posting content and pictures and updates and fun stuff. Uh, I got a decent following. It's not huge. Instagram is, is my best one. Um, I worked on building a launch team. Uh, you know, so when my first, when my books come out, you know, I'm trying to get those reviews, uh, to get these early readers, the arc readers to, okay, here's the copy, read it. Here's the date it's coming out. Really need your help. Help me promote it. Uh, leave a review. Uh, reviews were something that I was not prepared for how challenging that was. Um, well, to get them I, or to read them? To get them. Uh, to get well, them. Uh, read them too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is tough. Um, but getting reviews, it's so important because if you don't have a rating or you don't have a review, people aren't going to, there's no street cred for your book. No one, no one's going to buy it if they didn't know, know it's good. Um, so I thought I, I got 50 people on my lunch team for, for book one. And I thought, okay, some of them won't read it. Some of them will read it and maybe won't review it. But I'm like, all right, hopefully within a week of launch, I get 40 reviews. I'm like, all right, most of my people, these are these are good people. Most of them are friends and family because it's my first book. No one knows me yet. I had maybe six <laughs> that left reviews. And I'm like, oh, what is going on? Um, but it's, it's just a challenge. And uh, what I really did is for the first probably six months, every time someone contacted me saying that they had read my book, 
I'm immediately asking them, hey, if you haven't done so yet, could you go on Amazon and leave a review? Just honest review of what you thought. So I'm asking every time I get an email, every time I talk to someone, um, eventually they kind of take care of themselves, but you really have to get a lot of volume. Uh, you know, so I, you know, I've sold the first book is I've sold about 25,000 copies uh, and it's at 2000 reviews. Uh, so I think that's a pretty good ratio. You know, I, I put some fun stuff in the back of the book. I got a picture of my dog in there, the, you know, little story about him and how he wants you to leave a review. You know, okay. I think that helps with the, the ratio of getting them up, but it is difficult. It's a big challenge to, to get those responses. Yeah, definitely. There are ways. In fact, as a webinar, we run occasionally on getting your first 10 reviews, which is tricky. It's all for five, mm. five different ways yeah. of doing that. But very useful. Yeah, I had a, um, a mailing list. It ultimately will be your friend there, building up a mailing list. And mm. I had a, a review popped up mm. in my latest book, my second book recently, that was a, a weirdly a weird negative review i just didn't i don't mind yeah. the negative you get that but it was a weird one it sort of said yeah. the ending was predictable with x i can't remember exactly what he said but what he said was not the ending um so <laughs> i do think he, he stopped reading it and then guessed what was going to happen and said that was predictable so which is a weird thing to do so yeah. so i just emailed the list i didn't say why i just said look reviews are really important to me and chance uh, you know if you haven't left one yet yeah. you can leave one you know i've got five or six reviews that just made sure that one just dropped down just yeah, drop yeah. down the list so these these things are important and i think <laughs> to do two things to look at what review amazon has chosen uh, to sit at the top mm -hmm. um and then try sure. and get that altered if it's not one that's really good for you and secondly just look at it and some people move the ratings to most recent first and have a look at that order yeah, but, yeah, yeah. so that's one area reviews is one area you say it's a, it's a key part of it it's it's credibility um shop window Perfect. sort of stuff isn't it and, and referral stuff so it's yeah. very important but you obviously pushed your books. You, did you put some paid ads out for them in those early days? Very little. Uh, I did a few Amazon ads. Uh, I, I started bringing them down, though, because eventually I found probably 90% of my sales through Amazon were someone who searched Michael Webb or The Last Shadow Knight. So I'm like, oh, I, I'm paying for, for an ad for yeah. someone who's already looking for my book. Not that that's bad. People talk about you want it to be at the top of the list. That's fine. But I scaled those down. I did maybe maybe $50 a month in ads. Okay. Uh, I dabbled in Facebook. I'm actually taking your course right now on Facebook ads. And I have, I've figured it out that not that it's figured out successful, but how to do it. And I'm yeah. working toward that. So I'm going to ramp up my Facebook ads. Um, but I, I didn't do much ads. Uh, that was, that was very little of, of the sales I had. Um, I, when I first started, I think the toughest thing that I figured out is you got to get over the hump. Uh, because once you do, Amazon will sell your book for you yeah. with almost no effort. And it blows my mind. Uh, one of my readers let me know, uh, she got a Amazon delivery and she got an Amazon echo and it says, Oh, you have your, your blah, blah, blah has been delivered. By the way, Michael Webb has a new novel out, the yeah. shadow of destiny. Would you like to hear the description? And so echo is reading and advertising my book for me. Yeah. Um, but they send out emails all the time. And it's, I think most of my sales come from that, that halo effect that Amazon, it, it sticks up high in the ratings. Yeah. But so what I figured out is you have to work hard every sale, every review at the beginning, you have to get that traction. Um, I, because no one knew who I was before it was about three months before I published the last shadow night. Uh, I started reaching out to book bloggers and reviewers. I contacted probably 120 different book bloggers of just a cold pitch. Say, hey, I've got this book, you know, and they, I'm sure they get them all the time. You know, I'd love to send you a free copy, you know, read if you can, you know, read and post it. And I got maybe 10 responses out of the, you know, all the 120, whatever I, I sent out. That was a challenge. Um, I, I worked on Instagram, trying to network with people, trying to find other writers, you know, like, Hey, I'll, let me read your book. I'll read you read my book. So I did a lot of that. Um, I didn't do a good job of building a mailing list at the beginning. I wish I had started with a, uh, a reader magnet, started mm -hmm. a novella. I do have a novella now, which you I do now out to, okay. to build my, my mailing. It's a prequel. It's called shadow Knights origin. Uh, and it, it's, it's cool. It's awesome. Like, I love it because I, I wrote book one. And two, and I'm like, now I've figured out how to write. Let me do this novella. And it is 
awesome. It's packed, you know, 90 pages of action packed, just leads straight into the story. I love it. Uh, if anyone's interested, michaelwebnovels.com. I'll give you a free novella. Sign up for my mailing list. Never stop marketing. Um, exactly. Yeah. It just being on here, creative marketing. I, I'm here talking with James Blatch on, the, you know, on your podcast. It's just a chance to get the, your name out. Um, a huge part I, that I, my success that I attribute to is my cover. Uh, I absolutely love my cover designer. He does fantastic work. And that's the, the number one biggest comment I get when I was absolutely no one and no one knew who I was. Holy cow, that's an amazing cover. Uh, that, that's what I heard from everybody. Uh, it really stands out. It really conveys that epic fantasy, yeah. young adult-ish vibe. Um, I get so much traction from that. When I do in-person sales, I got a big banner, like a big, like a like a seven foot banner, whatever it is, and it's got the cover on it. People will flock from across the you know, the, the the room. They're like, wow, I saw that banner. Like, you know, let's let's talk. Yeah, that, that's what I'm interested in. Um, and of course, so we, the cover. I was going to say what we say about the cover that there's number one lesson which I go on about is it's its only job really is just tell you at a glance what the book is, and so you exactly. can connect with your the correct readers. Uh, as long yeah. as it dovetails with what what the story is, and and oh my goodness, at a glance, your cover does that job. I mean, it's it's a great cover, but its most important Thanks. thing is it just tells people what the book is. And oh, I right. like I like yeah. reading those sort of books. Um, yeah. So yeah, yeah, that's a struggle. Whenever I see other books that you, you see it, I'm like okay, that looks nice. But I have no idea what it is. Yeah, that's no good. Yeah, you, yeah. The, you see the book title, you see the cover, and you're just guessing. And by this time, I'm moved on. Um, so I think the cover has been a big part of the success. Um, I, I did some other paid things. I signed up for a book tour with my first book. Okay. I, I don't know how effective it was. You know, it cost a couple hundred dollars. I, I, I got readers. They had great reviews. They left it on their Instagram or Twitter or wherever and posted it on Goodreads and Amazon. Uh, they loved the book, but was it worth it for the amount of money I paid? I don't know. But I see especially in your first book, no publicity is wasted. Even if you paid a little bit too much, because like, like I said, it's, it's getting over that hump. You have to get that traction. So Amazon will do that work for you. So I, I would do it again, just because I wouldn't want to change anything. And the book has been very successful. Um, I did a couple of Goodreads giveaways. Uh, were those worth it? Again, I don't know. Maybe, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to fault it because uh, the end result is good. Um, I think uh, what, what I've tried to do the most is creative marketing, you know, thinking outside those, those are, those are mostly the obvious things, you know, pay for an ad here, uh, build a mailing list, do you get a launch team um, podcast? I've spoken on probably a dozen different podcasts, talking about my book, talking about writing, um, it's a great chance to, you know, to get my face out, get, get my name out and people to hear about, uh, my books. Um, actually next summer, uh, still tentative, but I'm, uh, there's a, a writer's conference. I'm going to be speaking at as one of the featured speakers talking about launching debut novels. Uh, so I'm super pumped about that. Um, is that us? Just, Where, where's that? No, it's not uh, you. Although, you know, well, well, let's talk afterwards. I'm happy, yeah, yeah. happy to come. I know Mark does the schedule, so I wouldn't know, but, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, um, so and I, I currently still work a day job. Uh, I've, yeah. I've worked for uh, Ferguson Enterprises. They're a plumbing distribution company. Um, I manage a shared purchasing center. I've been with them 20 years. Great company, great people to work for. So it's uh, it's tough to want to leave that because I, I really yeah. enjoy that group. Um, when do you, do, you, but, I, do you have a plot to leave, a plan to leave? Uh, not right now. Okay. Uh, you know, maybe down the road one day, but you know, as long as... I'm still enjoying what I'm doing. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm able to balance both at the time, which yeah. is which is great. Kind of gives me the best of both worlds. Um, but you know, I I found out they've got a uh, we've got a, it's called Yammer. It's like our social media site internal within Ferguson. So at my when I published my third book, so my trilogy was finished, the Shadow Knights trilogy. I got three awesome looking covers, and I just did a post of me holding all three books. It's like, hey, just celebrating a big win because it's just a social media thing. I had 20,000 people see that. And wow. there were a thousand comments on it. Wow. Uh, so it's just a great connection. I don't I don't even know how many sales I got from that, but a ton. I, uh, people were saying, hey, are you going to be up at headquarters? You know, I'd love to get autographed copies of it. And um, 
or uh, my uh, college I went to, Barry College in, in Georgia, um, they've got alumni magazine. Uh, so I've got a, an article mentioned coming up in the, in the next um, the next magazine that comes out that's going to, you know, kind of publicize me for, you know, having the trilogy out as, hey, past uh, alumni, Michael Webb, and, you know, successfully uh, debuts a, a trilogy so, and so no, so stuff like that. No stone is left unturned. You, if you, if there's yep. something that you think it'll work, and even if it's an author audience, you still find there's value sure. in that for you. Authors are readers, you know, yeah. probably more so than readers yeah. even. Um, like I, I also, I spend a lot of time on Facebook groups, um, not to market myself, but to interact, uh, yeah. you know, to engage. And I learn a lot. Uh, you know, there's tons of different groups out there uh, with very large audiences. Mm. So if you can bring some quality content uh, for the purpose of sharing it with others about like uh, my, my journey through writing the book, uh, how I marketed it, how I you know sold X number of copies. You know, I, I posted that in some Facebook groups, and you know, I'm not mentioned. I didn't mention my book name, anything about it. But like, uh, actually, on my my one year anniversary, I, I wrote a post outlining everything that I did. My book jumped up to number one in its category. Wow! Uh, two days after that, and just just because all these people are seeing and liking and sharing and commenting and buying my books. Yeah. Um, and of course, so, again, the, the Amazon algorithm notices that it increased traffic and Amazon right. algorithm, the one thing it likes is something that's selling. So if you start selling it, it right. starts selling it for you. Right. Yeah, so, exactly. Yeah. Um, so I, I, I've got a website. I sell merchandise, you know, uh, Shadow Knights Academy. I've got a T-shirt. I've got a cool logo that I've got hats that are on there as well. Um, so just you, to kind of, I, I don't. What's, so I was just gonna say, so so you you finished the trilogy, uh, the Shadow Knight yeah. three. What what is next then? Not tempted uh, to. I'm working on two two projects right now. Uh, so one, the first one I am so pumped up about because I've had this idea way back since I started. Um, I love treasure hunting stories, uh, and I love fantasy. So I'm combining the two into a fantasy treasure hunt series called the Treasure Hunters Alliance. Uh, first one will probably be out January. My goal is to publish probably every four months. Uh, but I'm kind of billing it as Indiana Jones meets Harry Potter. Okay. Uh, so it's this, this epic, you know, kind of a fun, uh, you know, here's this mysterious artifact and oh, it leads to a clue and I'm going to go find here. And then, whoa, this person's not who I thought he was. And wow, I just found this, you know, amazing relic and now it's worth tons of money, but the bad guys are after, you know, kind of that uh the indiana jones national treasure uncharted you know all these movies or books that uh just that i have that 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 kid-like enjoyment of searching for treasure uh so i want to capture that into story writing uh, now that i've figured out how to write stories then it's, it's gonna be really cool so i'm i'm pumped to get that out uh but the other one i'm working on concurrently is uh shadow knight's second trilogy uh, okay. Uh, so the first one is a story arc, books one through three, but the second, it's the same world, same characters. It's going to be like a 16 year gap in between them. Okay. Uh, so um, that's going to be coming out probably late next year because what I want to do, what I wish I did on my first book, I wouldn't actually change it because things worked out fine, but I would have loved to be able to publish them closer together uh, because I was about eight or nine months between books. And across the board, I always heard, uh when's the next book out like yeah. day one of publishing a book <laughs> like yeah. give, me, give me time like hold on uh some people were upset like uh one person gave me a a one-star review on amazon because i absolutely love the series but the last book's not out yet I'm like yeah. oh, is that yeah. worth a one-star yeah, review yeah, thanks yeah uh yeah <laughs> so I, I i my thought for the next trilogy is it is one story. Yes, it's three books, but it tells one story. I don't want to leave people hanging. So it's I'll probably do like maybe two months apart in, yes. in publishing them. Okay. Um, so that's my hope is to fish all that. And, and another uh, benefit of that is by writing all of it before you publish any, if I get into book three and say, you know what? I really want to change this. Yes. I can go back to book one and make little yeah. tweaks. Although with uh, indie publishing and eBooks, you can do that anyway. Uh, so it's not a major, have, major change, but 
I, I've snuck in a few of things course. here and We've there. We've all done that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I picked up these uh, physical copies of my books for the interview I was doing just now, and I made the mistake of opening them and looking at a couple of pages and immediately saw things, oh, God, I just, just reword that sentence. <laughs> resist, yeah. resist, leave it. Um, look, we're running yeah. out of time. It's been fantastic talking to you. You're cool. uh, uh, energy machine, and uh, I'm very, <laughs> very impressed with your application and the fact that you've – Thank we you. get a lot of this out along the way. Um, so some important takeaways. I think that one I mentioned earlier is, is a really important one. It is hard work and you apply yourself mm. and, and make sure that everything's the best it can be. Uh, but secondly, just not leaving those stones unturned, just finding uh, ways. You don't have to be pushy about it. You're just promoting yeah. the product, a book, and people, and if it's the right person, they'll appreciate the fact you brought it to their attention. That's a way, good way of thinking about it. But um, you've yeah. certainly got that right, Michael. Mm. Thank you. Yeah, it's. Uh, I, I've loved it. I can't wait to get more books out. I got all these stories in my head, and just I just need the time to write them. So yeah, uh, lots lots more to come. But it's it's been a fantastic journey. Well, at some point, Ferguson's going to have to be the loser in this uh, <laughs> in this uh, relationship. But anyway, yeah, not not yet. All right. Well, we appreciate it, and thank you so much indeed for coming on. Yeah. Thank you, James. This is the self-publishing show. There's never been a better time to be a writer. There we go. I think, do you know how much the landscape's changed from your day? Because you got going completely in the dark. I can remember you with your with the Black Mile book, writing mm-hmm. it. Um, it was a bit of a tomb, wasn't it? Quite a big, big book and trying tome. to get it... Tome. I always say that wrong. Trying to get it going. Whereas today... I've basically learned from people like you. And this was even before you discovered, I think, Hugh Harry and people like that when you first wrote The Black Mm. Mile. Um, I've learned from people like you, the best in the industry, streamlined everything and given myself a much better start. So that's people like Michael are useful to talk to from that point of view because they are employing all the best practices that they are coming, they come across. But um, yeah, thanks. So you you obviously wasted all your money and time to get us to where we are. Yeah, it took me a long time, but I figured it out in the end. Um, and yeah, no, it is it is a very different landscape these days. It was when I started. It was um, I didn't really know anybody. I didn't know anybody at all. And it was you know places like Kboards that were important in those days before it descended into toxic. What come today, the toxic yeah. mess it is today. Um, yeah, but it was it was great in those days. You were able to learn from people who were, who were doing really well um, and and you know, forging a path that no one had taken before. Um, and I was able to look at what they were doing and and try and tweak it for for how I I like to work and it, yeah it was it, it worked pretty well um, you know it's um, ten years nearly I'm never entirely sure I said when I did start publishing I have to, I need to I need to check it probably is around about ten years now um, yeah uh, I think it's more than that isn't it you must have might, published around no nine. Yeah, maybe maybe it's longer. I'm trying to think when the first Milton book came out, but I had published a couple before that, so I, mean, I need to check. Yeah, maybe. I to, mean, just uh, look on Amazon; it will tell me. But. Yeah, exactly. This is solvable. They've all done that. Listen to this. Um, yeah, so it was some time ago. Good. Anyway, I hope uh, the interview was as useful to you as it was for me. <clears throat> and one more thing I think we will talk about, Mark, but I haven't got huge amounts to say on it at the moment in terms of detail, but some people have noticed, and I've posted into the mastery group about this, that Amazon have introduced something called attribution links, Amazon attribution, uh, which is inside your Amazon ads uh, dashboard, at least in .com and .co.uk. I haven't checked DE and the other territories. It may well be there as well. And what does this mean? These are links that will link to your product or uh, whichever product you choose, um, and they will track any sales that come as a result of that. They work exactly like an affiliate link, but there is no affiliate payment attached to them. It's for tracking the effectiveness of your Facebook ads, for instance, of your email newsletters, your social media posts, and so on. So you create the links, use those uh, unique identifiers that you will follow, and then put them in place and, and work out how your campaigns are doing. Now, the reason I've got a lot to say about this at the moment is because I'm in the midst of trying to generate the data um, so I've had to up my campaigns, Mark, because 20 pounds a day is not going to do it in terms of the data I need to be able to optimize. Uh, so expect, expect uh, an expense claim at some point. But um, they are working at the moment. There is, as a lot of us are discovering in these early adopters, as I like to think of myself, uh, there is a bit of a, 
a, a, quite a significant lag in the data coming through and potentially a bit of a mismatch between how many clicks Facebook saying we got that should have gone to the page, right? Where else can you go if you clicked on it? Um, and how many clicks are showing up? So that might just be the data takes 24 or more hours, maybe even 48 hours to come through. So digging into it, there will be a module if you're in Ads for Authors to explain how to use it, not just how to use it, but how we should be employing it. And I'll give you a good way of organizing yourself around that. And I think we'll talk about it in more detail, Mark, when we we know a little bit more about how it's working, uh, how effective it is, and a bit more about the landscape. But it's uh, it's significant. I think it's a significant uh, moment for us. It's very very significant. It's been it's been in beta for about eighteen months. I I was I learned about it a long time ago. Um, I haven't used it because I use affiliate tracking most of the time. Um, but this is 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 you know it's, it's long overdue. Amazon should have done this ages and ages ago. Um, and it, it gets around the issue of. Amazon affiliate, the, the affiliate program not really liking you putting your links in social media advertising, for example. And I think the reason for that, for, I know it is, is because um, it's FTC, so it's it's um, making money off off the ad um, is a is a problem potentially. Um, so by removing that element of uh, the program that they they run with the affiliate scheme, it gets around the problem. Um, but yeah, ha- being able to have trackable links that that give you sales data is is critically important it was it was a really the, the kind of when i figured out what to do eight years ago when i was running my first facebook ads it was a real kind of it was an eye-opening moment because otherwise you just you can get clicks but you don't know if they're actually doing anything so to be able to track the other end of the equation um and to work out what money you are actually making from ads was is a real game changer so this makes it a lot easier um there are less hoops to jump through you don't need to get the account approved you know you don't need to amazon to approve your have have the amazon branding on the account you don't have any of the kind of issues with terms of terms of service all of that kind of stuff it's a really big a big moment so we will probably dedicate um uh, maybe even dedicate an episode to nearer to the ads launch yeah. in january next year yeah i think so and there'll be a module on uh on this which i will do we'll also uh, update the facebook ads course on the bits and pieces where we talked about affiliate links i guess we could still leave them in there but from the the reason you were talking about affiliate links in your module at that stage mark i think it was for the tracking right that was the main purpose it's not it's definitely not for money i mean i over the years i have made quite a lot of money through the affiliate program but that isn't the reason why you want to use them is you just need the data otherwise you're just kind of guessing whether your ads are working which isn't really sustainable in the long term especially not if you're spending a lot of money no although i will say i was having a chat yesterday with an author who's potentially going to join us on fuse and she was saying she looks at the data she gets back from the affiliate links as to what other people have bought to try and profile her reader a bit um which is this that is the sort of thing that happens in in industry that data uh, who you know google can basically profile our buying habits and all sorts of habits and Mm -hmm. that's useful in marketing so there is something to be said for that you do get some weird and wonderful things bought alongside your books don't you sometimes i've had some very strange things which are probably not not for a family (laughs) podcast but um yeah very interesting yeah, so if people don't understand what we're talking about here, with affiliate links, once someone's clicked on it, bought Mark's book, he gets a, you know, you can track and see that it's gone through there. If within 24 hours they buy something else, you get a cut of that. But you actually see what the product was. So if they bought a lawnmower, mm. if you're lucky, they bought a JCB digger for a quarter of a million pounds, but unlikely on Amazon. But they bought, I think somebody bought like a really expensive watch once for you, didn't you? You get like $300 or something ridiculous. Yeah, I've, I've, I've had a couple of big televisions and things occasionally I've, I've had, which, you know, all, you know, it's only a small percentage, two or three percent, but that right. can, that can yeah. add up over time. Yeah. Anyway, okay. So that's, um, that is uh, tracking links. Uh, it's called amazon attribution uh, go find it start having a play you can look they've got a very basic set of videos uh, one video i think in there to tell you how to use it but uh, if you're in the ads course of course you're going to get the uh, the uh, unexpurgated gen of how to employ them effectively right that's it mark thank you very much indeed um i know you're under the knife tomorrow so maybe the last time we see you so um uh, good luck thank thanks for everything can yeah, i ha- can i have your porsche or it's probably not paid no. off is it damn you can't. No. Um, Can I come and swim in your pool? Yeah, I'll probably do that. A bit cold <laughs> at the moment, though. <laughs>
<laughs> all right okay it's a minor thing don't worry uh thank you very much indeed uh, to everyone behind the scenes who helps put this show together couldn't do it without you and thank you very much for listening and of course to michael webb our guest this week all that remains for me to say he says a goodbye from him and a goodbye from me goodbye, goodbye. get show notes the podcast archive and free resources to boost your writing career at selfpublishingshow.com Join our thriving Facebook group at selfpublishingshow.com forward slash Facebook. Support the show at patreon.com forward slash selfpublishingshow. And join us next week for more help and inspiration so that you can make your mark as a successful indie author. Publishing is changing, so get your words into the world and join the revolution with The Self-Publishing Show.